Hello guys, welcome to uh, this video. I'm gonna teach you how to do how to use Bazel for building C files and also how to use Google Test in Visual Studio Code. Um, first thing first, we need to install Bazel. So if you are on Mac, uh, go you can go to docs.bazel.build. Uh, there are um, several instructions for uh, what what OS you have. So I have Mac OS. And installing a macOS is actually very straightforward. So for, uh, you need to install Homebrew first. Uh, Homebrew can be installed using this command. Um, I already have Homebrew installed, which is, you can test it like this. And um, once you have this, you type these two commands to install Bazel. I will put this URL in the description of the video so you can just copy and paste them. In order to test if Bazel is installed, you can type Bazel dash dash version and then you can see I can get um, the version 2. So that means I already have this. All right, so now uh, let's go to Visual Studio Code. In, uh, in, instead of creating a new uh, project rather than doing this, I'm going to um, copy the project from my GitHub. I'm going to put my GitHub uh, URL also in the description so you can do the same. So basically, it's a template for most of your C++ projects. So you copy this from my GitHub and then do git clone name of the repo. All right, this is copied now. So now I go to Visual Studio, open and C++ template. <coughs> All right, so now, as you can see, we have three for, uh, two folders, uh, source and test. So under source, I have lib and main. And in my root folder, I have workspace. So inside workspace, you can see that there's a load command. This basically loads a um, Bazel file from Git repository. This Git, repos Git, Git repository is um, uh, pointing to Google's GitHub so that Google test and all of its files is going to be downloaded. It's going to be used, used by this um, workspace file. Now, this is a file that you don't need to change at all. So don't worry about this. All the things that we have to be worried about are under source. OK, so under source, I have a lib directory. So basically, you put all of your class definitions and your library files under lib. Uh, here I'm defining a class, I call it a solution. Basically, it just prints um, a hello world command, a hello world message. Uh, the definition of hello world message is here. It says, um, it just returns a string with this value. Now, how do we build this simple class? Uh, there's a build file, so inside every of these directories, you put a build file. This, is a, uh, this file is gonna be used by Bazel to build your C++ files. So we have a keyword, the uh, CC library. That means what's inside this is going to be defined as uh, library files. The name of this uh, library files is going to be solution. This, this is a target which um, is going to build, be built by compiling these um, C++ files. So here we are saying look globally under all of these C++ files under lib directory. So I'm saying under lib double star matches basically any folder uh, recursively. So for example, this can be folder one, folder two, and so forth. And then there might be a, a file one.cc. So this means take that and use it for building this target. That means we, are, we want to uh, compile any file that is recursively under this lib. Same thing with your header files, you put them under HDRS. So these are uh, keywords for the build file. And then visibility basically means this is visible, these files are visible for every other uh, build file and, and uh, C++ files in this um, workspace. Uh, the good news is that you don't have to be worried about this and change this for most of your C++ files. So uh, let's move on. So basically, um, put your all your C++ and header files here. You don't need to change this build file unless you want to do something more uh, fancy. Now, 
there's a main file main folder um, which basically says now we want to build a binary so remember I had a library before now I have a binary the name of my binary the name of this target once it's built is going to be called main <laughs> it only has one source which is main.cc defined here and it depends on source this is the folder source under source there's for the lib and then inside this lib so this colon means look inside this build file on the lib the name of this library file is solution.lib so you need to build in order to build this main you need to build this target here <laughs> and that's all it is so again for most of your projects you don't need to change this as long as you put all of your classes here this they're all going to be built under this uh, target name and now my main file is going to be this so you, you just include your solution.h and then here I create an object of it I um, call one of its functions and then I return In order to run this, we just type bezel run and then the name of our main file. It has to be it has to be from our workspace file. So it's gonna be from source main build. Source is so top level source main build. Like I said, instead of build, you put a colon and then the name of your target. So the name of my target is called main. So basil run main. So as you can see, this ran um, and I get hello world as I expected. Uh, now let's change this message to something else. So instead of hello world, maybe I type some stars before and after. Now let's put this here. Let's put this here. Okay, so now let's run this now. As you can see, the the message here changed. Okay, so now so far so good. Um, how do we test this? Okay, so if you look at the folders that we already have here, there's another folder called tests. <laughs> under tests, you would see cc underscore tests. So remember we had cc library cc binary now we have cc test again this is a, a keyword for build file that basil uses uh, the name of this target is called tests it uses globally all the cc file inside our workspace so if you pay attention our text is on our test folder is on at the root of the workspace so basically it has access to source as well so it will see all those files so in order for this to be built all the files all the cc files inside the source also has to be built <clears throat> now it depends on two other target one of them is solution lib which you just saw it's under source and lib um, with the name of solution lib oops and um, Google test, gtest main. So that means um, from the repository of Google test, whatever you downloaded, use this target. So again, you don't need to change any of these for your uh, most of your projects unless you want to do something very fancy. The part that you need to be worried about is this solution test.cc file. So this is where we actually write the test. So as you can see here, I have uh, my include files, so I'm including my uh, header file from here and the gtest.h. Now, um, how do we write the test? Use the test keyword, um, the name of uh, the, the, your, your test framework, and then what this test is doing, right? So hello world, for example, should return hello world. So, I create an object of my um, class. The actual value of this function would be print hello world. 
and then the expected value should be hello world here now let's run this test and see if it works um, in order to run it we can just type basil and then test now the name of this file um, but it has to be from our workspaces and after so it's test solution test okay sorry I had to put the build file so let's drag the build file here and tests instead of build like I said you put the name of your target this is test.test all right so as you can see our test failed let's click on this file and you can see why it failed so remember we changed this hello world to stars before and after so what we expect is this but what we changed it to is this guy so let's fix this in my test let's put exactly the same value from my lib file and I put it back here all right now run this again and voila this test is now passing now let me add one more test here so let's do a, another test with another function so let me go here and then do let's return have an int function uh, and then this function let's say it returns um, returns size of vector so I'm going to include, include vector and let's say I pass a vector of int called inputs and this is std vector all right so now I go under my solution and add this function definition here okay so let's just return inputs that size all right perfect so now how do we test this let's go to my test and say handle uh, it should handle vector size now back here so I if I say let's just say this is an auto value my actual value is uh, solution return size of the vector and let's create a vector here uh, let's do um, vector std vector of in um, and then inputs and let's equal to something so it's a vector of three and I have to include vector here all right so now my expected value from this is three so I would expect this test to be something like this now let's see if this works all right so I have to pass this to this guy all right one more time all right this test is passing now so I gave it a vector of three and I expected three we can actually get rid of this line so now what if I put two So 
So as you can see, this test is failing. Um, again, it says I expected two, but the actual value is three. Um, if you want to fix this, let's give it a vector of size two. Now the test is passing. Now let me go back to this and show you one more thing. So it's a very good practice that whenever a test fails, we uh, also print the reason of it. So let's say um, once this is failing, expect the vector size to be two, but it wasn't. And let's put uh, all caps, oops, all caps error here. Okay, run this one more time. The test is failing. Let's go here. And this message is what we uh, put here. So you can help the person who's debugging this by putting uh, some message here, some error message here that helps them to fix this. Okay, before we finish, uh, let me show you a couple of more things. Um, so inside this solution underscore test.cc, we use two macros. First of them uh, was called test. This is defined by Google test. You don't need to be worried about this one. The other one was expect EQ. So basically this means expect these two to be equal. If they weren't, it basically creates all these messages that we saw here. Now, what are other alternatives to this expect EQ? Um, if you go to Google's GitHub, I will put the URL inside the video description. Um, there are other macros defined that you can use. So first of all, you can use assert, true or false, which basically um, it asserts, it makes sure this condition is evaluated to true. Otherwise, um, it's, uh, it stops the execution. So this creates a fatal error. You can do a non-fatal assertion using expect um, commands. Um, basically, this will continue the run. It just creates an error function. There are other uh, macros for comparison. There is uh, assert, equal, non-equal, less than, less than or equal, greater than, and greater than or equal. Uh, so you could use all of these ones. Um, now, the other important thing that you might want to know, want to use is the for uh, macros for strings. Basically, they do uh, string comparison. So um, if two C strings have the same content, ignoring case. So if you are, if I do the ignoring, uh, have case sensitive or non-case sensitive uh, comparisons, you can use these macros. And that's it. Now you guys know how to use Bazel. You guys know how to use um, uh, Google Test inside Visual Studio Code. Thank you so much for watching this video.